After a 30-year freeze, Dr. Grobe felt it was time to reinvestigate these drugs. He headed to the Amazon, where certain psychedelic drugs were never banned. He studied ayahuasca, a hallucinogenic tea used by South American indigenous people. Grobe followed 30 individuals suffering from various addictions. Half of them were given ayahuasca. Many of these individuals had problems with chronic alcoholism, drug addiction, antisocial behaviors, and after their exposure to ayahuasca and their very profound experiences, the, the individuals I interviewed had had transformative life experience and became uh, highly functional. Their alcoholism, drug addiction, sociopathy uh, appeared to entirely remit. When analyzing blood samples, Grobe made an astonishing discovery. Ayahuasca seemed to give users a higher number of serotonin receptors. Serotonin is a mood-regulating chemical produced by the body. With these results in mind, Grobe headed back to the U.S., determined to conduct controlled studies. It took years to convince authorities, but Grobe finally got approval to use psilocybin to treat anxiety in terminally ill patients. Sakuda was the ideal candidate for this experiment. During one session, she took a placebo. During the other session, she took psilocybin. You first start to notice a little physical difference. You, you start to feel tingling physically, a little different. And then you start to feel hmm, maybe emotionally a little different. She did great. She did wonderful. At about the uh, uh, four hour point, she, she her tears, I could, uh, I witnessed tears flowing down her her face, and so I was, I really didn't know what was going on, so I asked her when it was time to check in what was going through her mind, and she said she was thinking about her husband and how difficult it would be for him when she died. I could feel myself crying, and the tears were flowing. I had these, the eye mask on, but it wasn't from sadness or, or grief, it was a release a release of, of energy, of emotion, and a feeling that um, I began to see other more positive ways of looking at my situation, at my present life. I'm so worried about what's going to happen in six months that I'm making myself miserable now. What a waste. I mean, I'm not, I'm letting fear of the future mess up the present. And that was a real epiphany. It was like, oh, okay, I could change that. After the six hour treatment, her husband noticed a remarkable change. She was not in distress to the degree that she had been prior to receiving the medicine. And this didn't just last for a day, it just didn't last for a week. It's been ongoing. It's been continual. She just is a different person than she was prior to the treatment. Psychedelic drugs are still controversial, but they are regaining interest in the research community. Last January in Basel, Switzerland, 2,000 people gathered for the 100th birthday of Albert Hoffman, the inventor of LSD. Hoffman still believes his discovery will be useful for medicine. Uh, my name is uh, Charlie Grobe. I'm a... Grobe discussed some of his early results. Other scientists attended, including a team from Harvard studying peyote, psilocybin, and MDMA, better known as ecstasy. They are assessing their effects on depression, post-traumatic stress, and cluster headaches. This field desperately needs more research. It's time we get back to it because we may very well have at our disposal, you know, highly efficacious treatment models, even for individuals who do not respond well to, to, to mainstream treatment. 
A year after her treatment, Sakura received more bad news. Her cancer has spread, and doctors are giving her six months to live. But she says the one dose of psilocybin had a lasting effect on her outlook. For a long time, I think I was a, I've been able to maintain that view. We've, we've done a lot of things in that time. We've traveled. We've done a lot of things socially. We've attended a lot of things. We've just lived a very full and, and rich life. If large-scale studies confirm these results, the psychedelic drugs that wooed a generation might make a comeback, but this time in the doctor's office. Frédéric Zalak, CBC News, Vancouver. One final note on our story. Pamela Sakuda died in November. She was 59.